It's great to have you here, Peter. And I was saying that during the lecture, one of the best things about my job is meeting people who come, well, such as yourself, who are real, um, are, 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 have loads to say and really fantastic um, things to say about other languages elsewhere in the world. And it's, it's nice that you've come so far to, to find out a bit about Manx. Have you enjoyed your stay in the island? Yeah, enjoyed it. Great. And it was lucky today. Lovely weather. Yeah, I fantastic. Did a lot of stuff and well, should come for longer again at <laughs> yeah, some point. Yeah. No, definitely. It was a great experience and I must say I learned quite a bit because it's a bit more advanced than other languages I have to work with. Yeah, yeah. And who do you work with then? Well, I work with the um, Aboriginal languages in South Australia and I work with the Pitcairn descendants on Norfolk Island, mm. which is an Australian uh, administered island. Yeah. Well, that's part of the interest here, I suppose, that historic link, the bounty link, I suppose. But one link we're keen on is maybe developing is that linguistic link to two communities which have seen language loss, really. Well, you've got a cultural agreement between Norfolk Island and the Isle yeah. of Man, and I met up with Claire Christian on my last visit to Norfolk mm. Island, and there's definitely a lot of potential of sort of exchanging ideas, and yeah, maybe yeah. you get another Norfolk Islander coming yes, we have shortly, a few weeks, so you know. it would be a great basis. And yeah. Um, will many people in Norfolk Island have heard of the Isle of Man at all? They will have now. There was a, <laughs> when Claire Christian came. There was a big write-up, and yeah. people will know about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, it was a fantastic lecture today, and I think everyone. It was interesting that you could put it in different contexts, but the, the decline and revival of the language, but also that economic base to revitalise mm. in languages, which you're talking about mm. Aboriginal languages. In fact, that there's a great economic benefits to the communities and Australia generally in maintaining mm. those languages. Well, I'll say that the two reasons why I do it. One, I sort of did economics as one of my undergraduate subjects. Yeah. But the second one is it's the only language that politicians will listen to. If you can show that it's cheaper to support the languages and let them die, then they'll listen yeah. and do something about it. Yeah. And just tell us whereabouts Norfolk Island is then, because a lot well, of people won't know really. Norfolk Island is about two and a half hours flight from Sydney or Brisbane, east into the Pacific Ocean. It's a tiny speck, about five by eight kilometres, and then there's nothing for many, many kilometres again. The distance between Pitcairn Island and Norfolk Island was about uh, distance between Stockholm and New Delhi. Mm -hmm. Huge distance. And what's the population? The population of well, Pitcairn Island were only 42, and Norfolk Island about 1,600. And has there been a lot of support in the last, say, 10, 15 years to maintain their language there? Um, well, there's been a lot of um, well, activity. A lot of people are getting involved, a lot of people giving time and sort of voluntary time to do something about it. Mm. And there's been a lot of, sort of development of products around tourism, sort of little brochures, books, um, Norfolk language, um, souvenirs, and we have now Norfolk language signage in some of the tourism areas and hmm. in all the official brochures, the language features and is marketed as something part of the unique experience. Yeah, and if there's two things you could take from the Isle of Man which you think might be of use to, you know, the language in Norfolk Island, what would those be, do you think? Um, the one thing is that Anyone is welcome to become a speaker of Manx. You don't have a restricted language for insiders only, which is a problem in a lot of Aboriginal languages and probably in Norfolk. Um, so it is a very um, open approach. And the other one is you don't fight over spelling, <laughs> which is one thing I have in virtually all the languages I work yeah. in. People fight over spelling, and it slows down the revival yeah. no end. But, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good point maybe to finish on that, and which we've tried very strongly over the last 20, 30 mm. years, is to make the language here sort of um, open to anyone, really, mm, yeah. as, an, as an inclusive activity about living in the Isle of Man. Yeah, but that's the sort of the 21st century. You couldn't have a closed language... At this in the sort of 21st century. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, have a good trip back to Norfolk Island and I hope to see you again. We'll stay in touch anyway. We'll stay in to... touch, oh, yeah, I, definitely. Yeah. We'll and come out and visit. I would, I would love to. One day, one day. I look forward to it. Good night. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks Cheers. a lot.